Alright, ready to go? Alright guys, uh, my name is Michael Carmona, for those of you who don't know. Um, first off, I want to start by asking a few... Oh. First off, I just want to start off asking a few questions. Um, how many of you guys have recently moved to Kansas City, been here less than a year? What about five years or less? More than five years? What about those who have lived here your whole life? Okay, that goes for me too. Um, but how many of you would say that you're comfortable um, if you were asked your knowledge of Kansas City, how many of you would say that you're comfortable navigating around the Kansas City metropolitan area on your own? Okay, just a, a few a few of you. Well, when I was in college, I actually uh, um, roomed with, uh, one of my roommates is actually right here today, and one of the things that I enjoy doing um, because of my passion for Kansas City, I grew up here 23 years, and one thing that I like to do is kind of introduce people to what Kansas City actually has to offer. Um, what I used to do when my friend and I were living together, I would go out, take him to a lot of the local spots, you know, places that he didn't know about unless, you know, somebody from Kansas City actually took you there. So because of this, I actually thought of my company, Cultural Immersion Services, um, acronym KISS. Now, what this actually does, it's a, a specialized tour company that uh, focuses on customized tour services. Um, basically for those people who are new to the area or those of you who have lived here your whole life but still want to learn a little bit more about what the city has to offer. All right, now currently I was looking at online and I saw that there are actually some tour services, um, one of them known as uh, Tour de KC. And what they do is they give, they offer tours to uh, the casinos, to um, to different museums, art museums, and there's also a gangster tour. But one thing I notice about these tours is that they already set the places where they take the people. Now, with my business, it's a little more intimate, and we allow people to choose where they would like to go. Um, Part of it based on our recommendations and also um, based off the person's interest. Now, how we would compete with these companies? I was looking at and at the at these companies, and what they charge is about thirty dollars per person for about two hour uh, ride, and it's a ten minimum uh, ten. 10 minimum people. So what I want to do is offer, uh, like I said, more intimate, $25 per person, and if you bring somebody with you, an additional $10 per hour. Um, who will we sell to? Like I said, newer residents, people who are not familiar with the area. Uh, what we plan to do is uh, work with local businesses um, because we want to recommend lo the local spots, local restaurants local shops to people. Um, also, we could work with, uh, with universities because I'm sure some of you, I'm not sure how many of you are from here, um, some of you who took your undergrad here in Kansas City who are actually from here. I know Tristan, you're from Wichita, right? Mm -hmm. So um, how familiar were you with, how long did it take you to get to know Kansas City? It took me a while. It's confusing compared to which style of street stuff makes more sense. All right, so one of the things that I was thinking <coughs> of is that we could add a service, work with the universities to provide service to students, um, kind of give them a feel for the area. For instance, here at Lockridge University, I'm not sure how many of you have gone around the, the Truist area, but part of it would be, you know, taking you to the places around here, around Kansas City, so that way, when you eventually uh, eventually venture off on your own, you can say, hey, Michael showed us this place, he showed us that place, we know where to go now. 
and you feel more comfortable uh, just getting around here. Other uh, other people we could work with. Um, right now, I know a lot of you guys are here about free agents and uh, the NFL. Well, one thing that uh, these NFL teams could do is kind of show the show the players a little bit of the city, what it has to offer. Because I think that you can sell a city to a person, um, show them what there is, you know, and that can possibly get them to come. And this also works for corporations who are looking for uh, potential employees from out of town. Um, the only cost that I see uh, right now would just start driving my own car because there aren't really any limitations. Uh, right now, Missouri charges, um, you have to have an E-Class license, which costs $17.50 for three years, or you can get a three to six year license for uh, $35. Now we eventually want to take this <coughs> and uh, make this into a taxi service um, because that's just another way to make money. And most of us like making money. I like making money. But right now, uh, there's actually a, uh, an issue going on between uh, the Taxi Transportation Group and the Kansas City Taxi Drivers Association. And uh, just recently, uh, Pitch just put out an article about this. Um, it's um, due to the, um, the minimum requirement of 10 permits in order to start a taxi service company. So because of this, the, four, the 547 taxi permits are owned by only nine companies. So you kind of think, look at this and say, well, there's really not too much competition. And the biggest taxi service, uh, Yellow Cat, owns a majority of the, business, or of the permits. And one of the issues right now is that the taxi drivers don't own the permits themselves. They're actually leasing the permits, and they pay from $160 upwards to $470 a week for these permits. Now, like I said, we would officially open our taxi service once we get 10 employees. Officially, because Stephen once mentioned entrepreneurs like to break the rules a little bit. So uh, we would actually be running a side job, not letting everybody know that. So, <laughs> and right now, the Yellow, Yellow Caps actually has nine contracts with um, some of the biggest places, the Sheraton Hotel, the Intercontinental, um, and seven other big locations. And what this means is that no other taxi service is allowed to, uh, to pick up people at those locations. Now, one thing I thought about beating that is, hey, just getting good with the doorman. <laughs> there was actually an example mentioned in the article. Um, the doorman actually recommended a, a smaller company to somebody five dollars. <coughs> so it doesn't really cost much to to get business. Um, another issue, another thing they mentioned was at the KCI International. I'm not sure how many of you fly, but if you notice, there's no taxis in the terminals. Um, this is due to the fact that um, before there were issues, uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the taxi rules. Um, usually it's first come, first serve. I actually did this myself when I was in Barcelona. Uh, there was a line of taxis, and I got into the one that was closest to me and not in the one that was actually in the very front. And I was told, you have to go to the very front because what this does is somebody, um, if a taxi service that's second or after, takes a person, fights ensue. But an issue with this is that these taxi services don't have any representatives in the terminals. So one thing that my company would do is have people waiting at the terminals telling you, hey, we have a taxi service that provides an additional value-added service and that we know the city pretty well. Um, because before, the permits were very easy to get, but now the city is trying to limit um, limit to 500 permits. So when they were easy to get, these uh, 
taxi drivers, they didn't really focus on, uh, on knowing much about the community. Um, going back to Barcelona, I had a situation where I had to uh, take a taxi cab from my school to the hotel um, due to a, uh, um, I, I wasn't dressed professionally that day. So <laughs> I was told, take a taxi, come back quickly. Well, it ended up being that the taxi driver didn't know where my hotel was. I ended up having to tell him where the hotel was, giving him the directions, and after waiting in traffic for so long, I got out and walked the extra two blocks. And then on my way back, I told the taxi driver, take me to my school. He didn't know either where my school was. I told him it's around this area, and eventually same thing. I just got tired of waiting, got out the taxi, walked the block. Um, now, what these taxis cost normally are about two dollars and fifty cents a mile, or to get in, plus two dollars a mile and one dollar, one dollar when they're sitting. What I would do is charge three dollars to get in, and then one dollar a mile. Because I was actually looking at it, and if if you um, the city the metropolitan area of Kent City isn't very large, um, I was looking at possible areas of operation. And if I were to operate in a 20 mile radius of downtown Kansas City, that would include areas like Independence, Olathe, so places that are fairly, uh, fairly far also. Um, and lastly, I think you could bring this idea just about anywhere because it's more like, um, like Intellectual property, I believe, just kind of changing the game of the uh, of the of the system. So, I'm an international business student, and I've learned in my intercultural communication class that I took as an undergrad that even in the United States, every city is different. We all have our own culture. Kansas City is totally different from St. Louis. You can't do the same things, and this is important because. One thing that I like to do when I go into a town is I like to immerse myself into the air. I like to do the things that, one of the first things I ask is, what is it that the people here do? Because I don't want to go to that city and <coughs> see a bunch of tourists. I want to see the people who are actually living there. Um, so, like I said, the um, importance of this business is that we want to make um, a taxi service and a tour service that is a little more intimate. Um, in order to do this, we have to make a first, uh, sorry, a good first impression. And because of this, <coughs> we want you to, even if it's for a day, we want you to fall fall in love with the city that that you're visiting. So, this is where we come to our model. I mentioned it on Facebook earlier. But our motto would be that you never forget your first kiss. <laughs> and that's all I have. Sorry. <laughs> can, we, can, we go back to the, can we go back to the pricing model on the tour? And hey, you had mentioned some of those numbers. Can you run those numbers by me again? Oh yeah. Um, well, um, one of the things I was looking at is the gangster tour, where they take where. Um, it's actually owned by uh, Yellow Cab, um, where they take you to different areas, uh, different locations, you know, mob houses, locations where uh, mob scenes had gone on. And also, I'm not sure how many of you guys are familiar with the uh, Valentine's Day Massacre over at Union Station, but that is also one of the places that they take you. And like I mentioned before, they charge $30 per person but you have to have a minimum group of 10 people, so you're talking about spending $300. And we want to be more intimate. We want to just focus on taking one to about six people. Um, that way you kind of get more of a, of a feel of what's going on. And one of the things that you are allowed to do during the service is any time during the service or during your ride, you can actually just say, hey, I want to get out right now. I want to look at this. Can we get out, take some pictures? Um, just 
full round. Well, and so would you charge per person still for that? Um, like I said, $25 uh, per hour plus an additional $10 per person. So okay. if you were to take upwards, like I said, six people, that'd be uh, $85 an hour. I think you have to, I think it's going to be troublesome to use your own car. I think you got to have uh, limos or a rat right, right. bus or something. Right. That's what I thought. But, um, I was kind of thinking of, like, what if I was actually to do this business right now? And like I mentioned, I, I've taken my friend around before. My cousin came in from, uh, from San Diego one day. And after we were done hanging with our family, I said, hey, do you just want to go around sightseeing around the city? And my sister actually tagged along with us, and she told me afterwards, like, Michael, I didn't know you knew this much about Kansas City. So, um, like I'm saying, this kind of a business that I think that I could run by myself, and then through, to through time, I could get people, other people involved who have a passion for, for Kansas City, and like I said, they're an expansion passion for their own cities.